Early man's curiosity about the sun and other natural phenomena was satisfied by myths. During the many centuries since that time, he has searched for answers to the fundamental questions about the world surrounding him. Today, this quest for understanding continues in scientific institutions throughout the world. One of these institutions is the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory, whose Berkeley site is visible in the foreground. To provide new foundations of knowledge upon which to grow, continued research into the sub-nuclear world is necessary. This evolves into a never-ending cycle of basic research, which is truly a beginning without end. This laboratory is a product of man's curiosity about the true nature of the world around him. One man possessing this curiosity was the late Professor Ernest O. Lawrence, who from an idea in 1929 developed a revolutionary machine, the cyclotron. From the first cyclotron, nine inches in diameter, larger cyclotrons were developed, which have become major tools in extending man's senses, thus permitting research in atomic and sub-nuclear particles. It was during the 1930s that many distinguished scientists aided in developing the cyclotron into operational research equipment. The National Farm and Home Hour from the Berkeley campus of the University of California. Uh, but Dr. Lawrence, Henry's told us about all these new discoveries of yours with the 75 and the 225 ton cyclotrons. Uh, what do you need a great monster of 4,900 tons for? Well, Jennings, uh, you see, we've created valuable new substances and produced new forms of energy, well, such as the neutron ray, but, but we still can't completely smash an atom. For that, we need a 4,900-ton machine. Well, what's so important about smashing a little atom, anyway? Well, I think I can answer part of that, Jennings. For one thing, with the 4,900-ton cyclotron, it may be possible to change any element into another at will and then create valuable new substances to order. That would give us complete mastery over the physical world. Mastery over the physical world. Over the physical world. Physical world. Physical world. The invention of the cyclotron triggered a scientific arms race as universities sought to build larger and larger machines. As the world cascaded towards global war in the late 1930s, governments became interested in cyclotrons for their military potential. Universities, eager for funding, readily accepted government involvement. In 1946, the Berkeley Radiation Laboratory was founded. During an appearance on national educational television, Professor Lawrence explained how the cyclotron works. Now here we have a, um, a mechanical model of the cyclotron which perhaps might be helpful in understanding how it works. There are uh, two semicircular electrodes in the vacuum chamber of the cyclotron uh, which, uh, so to speak, move up and down in potential. Here we have two plates that move up and down in potential and the particles are generated here at the center so if they start here and this is up and, and this half is down they will go across downhill and pick up energy. And uh, we'll start it off. Here it's up, here it's down, 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 down. There's two are going up and down, so the particle always crosses the region between downhill, and therefore the particles spiral out on ever-widening circles, finally coming to the periphery where they strike the target for the nuclear investigation. To provide national leadership and control of the program, a civilian agency, the Atomic Energy Commission, was formed. The AEC is the major sponsor for programs of nuclear research, including those at the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory. Federal sponsorship permitted the completion in 1946 of the 184-inch cyclotron as a research facility. Subsequently, the Bevatron, a much higher energy accelerator, was constructed. In 1954, it became operational, and in the years since, it has revolutionized our knowledge of sub-nuclear particles. In 1952, the nation needed a new laboratory to conduct research and development in applications of nuclear energy. At the request of the Atomic Energy Commission, Professor Lawrence, with Dr. Edward Teller, started the laboratory at Livermore. 
The Livermore Lab was intended to be the country's premier institution to research nuclear fusion and high energy physics. As the scientific community began to grasp the significance of the magnetrine effect, Livermore was selected as the third location to receive an underground particle accelerator large enough to initiate a fusion reaction after Nevada and Sweden. The Sweden accelerator was, and still is, the largest accelerator built. Switched on for the first time in 1970, it soon came to be known as the Loop. The Livermore Loop was relatively small in comparison, only 12 miles in diameter. But when it was completed in 1974, it, along with the other loops, initiated a technological revolution. Post-World War II, Russia starts experimenting with the effects of a new element called magnetite, and soon discovering its qualities in repelling against the Earth's magnetic field. Resulting in the effect of being able to lift large crafts into the air, the magnetite's effects condensed into these dishes we see under the crafts. This breakthrough convinced other nations that focusing on research would have big payoffs. In the 1950s, Sweden created a large giant particle accelerator below part of the east coast and its island. This collider was dubbed the Loop. While many breakthroughs came from the Loop, the technologies they were condensed into became obsolete due to even more recent findings, hence the scattered nature of the landscape. Yet strange stories that are passed between the swing set leads the mystery of what goes on underground and what breaks out. Hit it in the eye, and it's good luck. Stop. Why? How would you like to be picked on? But it's a robot. Obama! Obama! Ever wonder where robots come from? Leave me alone. My brother says it's part of what they do underground. Like they made them, or found them. What are you doing out here anyway? These are my woods. No, they're not. Well, not officially, but... What are you doing? Looking for someone. You lost? No, she is. Who? I don't need your help. You don't want to go in there. Haunted. Alma? Told you. Haunted. Oh, nice. 
I collect the good ones. Who are you looking for? Your friend? My mom. Oh. 